Welcome to this movie in the series of simultaneous localization and mapping, SLAM, that deals with AKF SLAM. EKF SLAM is a SLAM solution that's based around the extended Kalman filter. It is arguably the most straightforward way to solve the SLAM problem, which is why we discuss it here. At the same time, it has its pros and cons, so other methods could also be uh, considered. To fully appreciate this movie, you should know about the SLAM problem and you should know about the Kalman filter and extended Kalman filter since before. To repeat, this is the SLAM problem. It's the problem of finding the pose of this sensor platform within a map based around the number of landmarks as here, while not knowing the map beforehand nor the trajectory of the sensor platform. So, so simultaneously localizing within the map at the same time as we are building the map. It's a uh, problem that needs to be solved both parts at the same time. We have modeled it in this way with the state that comprise both the state of the sensor platform that evolves according to dynamic model and a map that is static over time. And that's been indicated here by not having any process noise. The measurements relate the pose of the sensor to specific landmarks. And we can get several of these measurements during one time instance. The important part here is that we need to associate the appropriate landmark to the measurement that we have. And that is done with this indicator here, CKI which is the which landmark is associated with the ith measurement at time k. And what we'll do today is to solve this using the extended Kalman filter, which yields the EKF slam. To use the EKF, we will assume a linearized model of this kind. So we have a linear model for the propagation of the state. So xk plus 1 is equal to f times xk plus process noise. The map is, stays the same. The measurements that we use are linear as well, as indicated here. It's a linear function of x and a linear function of the map. Note that the linear function that we use in front of the map depends on which landmark that we have observed and in which order. So this here is the complete set of associations that we make. For simplicity, we'll assume that c here is known. The map, as I said, is uh, MK, and it's uh, stacked landmark positions in our case. We will use the extended state Z throughout this presentation, where Z comprise both the state of the sensor platform and the map stacked like this. The matching uh, covariance matrix P then has structure where we can relate some part to the motion of the sensor platform only. The map and then the mix components here. With this model, we are now able to formulate the EKF SLAM on the covariance form. We simply apply the Kalman filter to the model that we have seen. This turns out to be an EKF if we have performed linearizations to obtain the linear model previously defined. We see that there is the normal time update step where we only affect the pose of the sensor platform, the map is untouched. We see that when we do the update of the covariance for the time update step, we have the normal update for the pose of the sensor platform. The map is unchanged. There's no mixing between these two. And we have to maintain these off-diagonal elements throughout the computations. Note that PXM is a really thin matrix. It's, it's wide, but it's thin. So this part is not so expensive to compute. This one is typically quite small, whereas this one could be gigantic. So it's a good thing that we don't have to update it. The measurement update is exactly the one that we expect from the Kalman filter. However, to highlight the structure, 
this here is split into different parts that comes from uh, the division of the state into the also the sensor platform and the map. What should be highlighted here, I think, is that to update P, we touch all the elements in the covariance matrix. And this highlights one of the downsides of the extended Kalman filter SLAM formulation. PMM, which is the, the covariance of the map, has all its components updated by the measurement updates. And if the map is large, say thousands or tens of thousands of objects, this becomes computationally complex. Furthermore, it turns out that the cross correlations within the map between the different landmarks and between the landmarks and the posts of the sensor platform are really essential for the performance of the SLAM solution. Uh, it's quite intuitive because if you cannot observe all the landmarks at the same time, we need to be able to connect them to align them uh, when we see new things. This is unfortunate, however, because that means we cannot make simplification by crossing out small terms in the covariance matrix to simplify the computations. We will make one attempt within the EKF SLAM framework to improve the situation somewhat. We will look at the information filter form of the extended Kalman filter and see what that can do to our solution. So the information filter is an equivalent formulation of the Kalman filter, though formulated in terms of the information, which is the inverse of the covariance, and the information filter state, which is the information times the normal state. You can read more about this in the textbook. Given the information state and the information, we can formulate the measurement update in the filter in this way. Even here. It's beneficial for the SLAM problem because if H is thin, as is the case uh, if we only observe some of the landmarks in our map, this becomes a low rank update which only affects a few elements in the information matrix. Typically those related to the observed landmarks and the pose of the sensor platform. So compared to the update in the covariance-based column filter, which touched all the elements in the covariance matrix, this only touches a few of them, which makes the computations much more efficient. The information filter form has another benefit, and that's that it's possible to encode that we have no information about the state at all. That's by simply setting the information to zero. In the covariance case, we would have to set the covariance to infinity, which is not numerically stable and, and a good solution. But in the information form, we can actually say that we know nothing about this. So we, uh, we make use of that, especially for the map, which you know, we know nothing about. The information form of the filter then becomes uh, these steps. We have the association step, where we associate a landmark with the measurements that we have gotten. We're not discussing this further, but as I said, this is an important step to uh, perform proper SLAM. We have the measurement updates, which given the structure of the problem becomes these low rank updates here. Quite straightforward. Uh, we only touch a few elements in this big matrix. This one is a pretty small matrix, this is a thin matrix, it's not too expensive. So we gain in this step. Next we have the time update step, which is when the measurement update step is easy, the time update step is slightly more involved and costly, but not as bad as it first may look. The benefit here is that we know that if something is zero in the information matrix, it's uh, not valuable, so we can make truncations with small values. And that is one way to gain complexity here. So we improve the complexity of the algorithm by observing that in the information form, it's possible to discard small values in a way that's not possible in the Kalman filter form. Finally, to uh, be able to use the solution, we want to have the pose of the sensor platform and uh, the map. 
we need to extract it from the information state. Unfortunately, this involves inverting this large information matrix. Uh, and with the structure, we get these solutions then for the, the state of the sensor platform and the map. And that's the catch with information matrix form. It needs to be inverted. However, there's ways to at least uh, improve the situation. We can see the finding of X and M here as solving this equation system. And that can be done with efficient gradient search methods. And if we warm start them with the previous state, then we could quite quickly arrive at the solution without having to perform a proper inverse of the information matrix. And that is one trick to actually speed up this method to be useful in practice. So before we look at an example of EKF SLAM being used in practice, uh, let's summarize some uh, properties. So EKF SLAM scales really well with the uh, state dimension. There's uh, nowhere in the algorithm something that scales poorly with the state dimension. Um, unfortunately, it scales poorly in the landmark dimension, uh, but there are approximations, especially if you use the information form, that could circumvent this or at least make the situation more beneficial. The EKF SLAM is sensitive to incorrect associations. A single misassociation of a landmark to a measurement could completely ruin the solution. Uh, and that's because we only keep one possible solution at the time. So if we say that we see a landmark that should be on the left, but we see it on the right, and then compensate for this, we will have serious implications to both the pose of the sensor platform and the map. And this must be avoided to all cost. And that means that in an EKF SLAM solution, a lot of time is actually spent in doing appropriate associations. Before concluding, let's look at an example of EKF SLAM used in practice. What I'll show you here is a cooperation between Atomatic Control and EDA, uh, where we had a airborne UIV uh, localizing uh, with respect to, to ground using a camera, where the camera provided features that were tracked. What you will see when I start the movie is, um, as you see here, the landmarks that has been found by the camera, the true position, and there will be ellipsoids representing the estimated positions of those. And we'll see how they evolve over time. So let's start the video. And watch how we are actually flying over this area, how the camera identifies landmarks as we go, how we snap onto them and how the uncertainty in the position of the landmarks uh, improves as we see them several times and how they relate to the other landmarks that we have. You can also see at some occasions where landmarks are, are dropped because we don't believe in them anymore. And as the landmark seems fairly steady and, and uh, locks up to proper positions in the map, uh, we can conclude that the method is working. To improve the situation further here, we should have log closure. That is that we travel back and revisit landmarks that we've seen before. Then it's possible to compensate for drifts and other things in the odometric measurements. So conclude, uh, we have looked at the simultaneous localization and mapping problem, the SLAM problem and have solved it using the extended Kalman filter. Two different methods were considered. The first, the normal extended Kalman filter uh, version of the solution, which had the problem of being very complex in the measurement update, as all the elements in the covariance of the map had to be updated. Therefore, we also looked at the information form of the extended Kalman filter to derive a method that uh, had better computational complexity as it could utilize structure better. Or overall, the properties of these solutions 
uh, are that they scale well with the dimension of the state, which is beneficial, but poorly with the number of landmarks. So if you have many landmarks, the methods become expensive. We saw that using the information form of the extended common filter had some benefits that we could utilize. And I pointed out that proper landmark associations are essential for the proper operation of the ETF SLAM. To learn more about ETF SLAM, please have a look in the textbook in uh, section 11.2.